Hello, everyone. John Frost with Top Spin Tennis. In this video, I'm going to show you five magic moves to Evo Karlovic's serve. He once clocked his first serve at 156 miles an hour. He holds a record for the fastest second serve on the ATP Tour at 144 miles per hour. Enjoy the video. It helps to be six foot eleven, but there's some things, regardless of your height, that you can do on your serve that'll help you gain more power and control at the same time. So magic move number one is going to be your grip tension. A lot of players have a death grip on the racket. I like to tell my players that tension can be the enemy of efficiency on a serve or any stroke for that matter. So let's go ahead and zoom in to his serve. Notice how relaxed he is as he takes this racket back. Notice those fingers here as how they come off the racket. It's something you may be able to implement as a player. He's really old holding on to the racket with his index finger and thumb. I mean, that's it. So as he's taking this racket back and working that bilateral motion here, he is really, really loose. Notice here, we're going to go, I'll go into the video a little further up. Notice how that pinky or that index finger comes off here. So you can see that. And then he transitions as he goes back. And then three other fingers come off the racket. He's only holding on to the racket here with his index finger and his thumb. So that's magic move number one is just grip tension. Be relaxed. Take some of those fingers off the racket as you take it back just to relax that arm. Magic move number two is the toss. A little unorthodox here. I mean, as far as the initiation point, notice where he initiates. It's right between the legs here. And that's that can be common for a lot of players. Then the other thing to keep in mind with this toss is notice how it's really initiated with the shoulder. Nothing is really nothing else is assisting here with the toss. It's all shoulder. His elbow's slightly bent, but that's fine. He's not really utilizing that for initiating the toss. It really comes from the shoulder. But one thing that I want you to, to see here is notice how he actually has like the letter C. He's cupping the ball, almost like he's, I've got this cup of coffee, like he's going to take this and just take it and make it and have it go straight into the clouds. That's basically what he's doing here. He's got the letter C, making that letter C with his index finger and thumb. And he's basically going to make an imprint in the cloud with that letter C. So everything is initiated with the shoulder, puts that letter C in, into the cloud, and releases a little higher than most. I mean, he's considerably above his head. Usually most players will release the toss right around the forehead or top of the head. He has a higher release point here. But that's magic move number two is a toss that's really initiated from the shoulder. Elbow slightly bent here when he releases. And there's the release point over the head here. Notice the other thing with the release point. See where he releases, but notice where his racket head is as he releases. That's that bilateral movement. This can be challenging to get down. He's done this thousands of times, so he has it. But by doing that, he's actually going to get this racket, by starting it here, he's going to get a lot of lag and be able to come around and really snap through that ball. At the Magic move number three is the stance. So notice how he's got a nice wide base here, and then he's going to go into this pit, pinpoint stance. I love this motion because it really gets the momentum going forward. So notice how his momentum's going forward here. I use a platform stance where my feet are apart the whole time, but there are some advantages to the pinpoint stance. One is just the momentum going forward. I really like that motion or that movement. And then with the pinpoint, once he releases that toss and gets into this loading position, I've talked about this before, this is your opportunity to get balanced and load. He does that. So if you're looking to get a little bit more momentum and you want to really rotate a little bit more on your serve, this pinpoint stance can be a great way to get the momentum going forward. And especially if you're like a serve and volleyer, this is going to help get you to continue to go into the court 
and attack the net. Magic move number four is going to be the loading phase. So he's brought that foot forward. Let's go ahead and look at that loading phase. It's right here. Really interesting position for him. The first thing that I noticed right away, just notice his arm. How it actually kind of like slings back here a little bit. I'd like to compare this to like actually trying to do like a cartwheel. I don't know if I've seen anybody where they actually like fling this this arm back. See that how he does that? And it's almost like he's going to do a cartwheel here with this motion. This works for him. I mean, he's hit a serve at 156 miles an hour, so something's working for him. But I'd be interested in your thoughts. Have you ever tried anything like this? If you could have comments down below, what are your thoughts on why he's doing this? I feel it's once again, it's just for momentum and almost feel as if he's going to do a cartwheel here, right? And get his momentum and that rotation going through the ball. So he's got his racket head up here, but notice the bowing that he gets here with his upper body and the hip. I feel that you can get more bowing like this, this effect where with the pinpoint stance, because the feet are together and I feel it's easier to get that hip out into the court. So that's the other reason why this pinpoint stance can be very effective is get that bowing and a little bit more energy going up and into the serve. All right, magic move number five is just going to be the contact point. Notice how he drops this racket head into the slot. Does a nice job there. Begins to launch and then look at that contact point. This is one of the big issues with, with players that are struggling on their serve. If you want more consistency on your serve, you need to get the ball into the court. The kinetic chain will be, will be efficient. You're gonna get everything out into the court. Being six foot 11, notice where he makes contact. I mean, he is considerably out into the court here. A lot of players though, rec players, intermediate, you're finding the ball back here. Think about that distance. You're, you're stealing this distance here from yourself and your opponent. By getting this ball out into the court, he's able to, he's hitting down into the court and he's taking time and space away from his opponent and the kinetic chain is going to be efficient and maintained. And now by, by getting that ball in the court, notice how his momentum continues to go out and now he can attack the net. I hope this helps. Thank you so much for your support. Please leave a comment below. Tell me what you liked. If there's anything that you didn't like, I'd like to hear it because we're always constantly looking to improve. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit that like button and that subscribe button as well. Don't forget that notification bell. Thank you so much. Have a great day.